are we filming? Yes, we are. So I want to I want to revisit my Filofax Lindhurst. Um, this is a A4 sized Filofax that I have had for around about twenty years now. Uh, for the first ten years, I I use this virtually every single day, so it's had a lot of use, a lot of use. And then uh, I I retired. I retired about ten years ago, uh, so I didn't. I, I hardly use it at all. Um, but recently, I have been using it extensively. I like that word. I'll say it again: extensively. Um, and uh, I just wanted to share with you how it's standing up to wear and tear and what I'm using it for, because I really, really like this. Um, maybe it's quite rare, but uh, I, uh, with the exception of the pocket file effects, which I'm not really using at the moment at all, mainly personal, one or two A5s and the Guildford Mini Extra Slim. Uh, which is which is effectively A7. It's the smallest one ever made. So here we are. I am using, almost on a daily basis, the smallest Filofax that Filofax have ever made and the largest. At least, at least there may be one or two slightly larger because they are A4, but they have a, uh, a strap... So it's slightly wider, but this is a zipped folder. Um, the Filofax Lindhurst. Let me take these out because uh, I, I quite like this external pocket for... Um, what have we got in here today? So we've got a, we got a diary. Um, as you are probably aware, I'm using... Uh, at least I'm trying out for the moment. I'm trying out... I do have uh, a diary in here as well, but... I'm trying lots of different ones, but my favourite at the moment is this custom-sized Atoma disc-bound binder as a as a daily diary. But let's let's move that out of the way for a sec. Uh, I'm using this older Guildford Mini Extra Slim as an inbox. Very very useful because the last thing you want to do is say, I want to make a note, and then you have to say, ah, oh, let me get this out of my backpack, because I want to open this up. I mean, it, that's just not going to happen. I'm actually using this as a project book, but let me let me show you. It's a project book with a difference. Um, let's just unzip it. Now, I tend to have this at home, and I don't use the zip, because it's a bit of a faff, as they say, here in the UK. It's a bit of a faff. Uh, and to be honest, nothing's going to move. I'm not going to lose anything at home. If I took this somewhere, then I would zip it up and then everything would be in here nice and safe. I could drop this as I'm walking or cycling and it would be fine. It would be absolutely fine. Um, before, I, before I show you what I'm doing with it, I just want to cover the wear and tear because I am very very impressed with this as you can see it's got it's picked up lots of marks over the uh, over the years and scratches but I call this one of my bulletproof filofaxes I mean it wouldn't take a, a bullet but um, it's uh, from a from a perspective of reliability um, it's just fantastic and the, one of the things I want to show you, and it's not a criticism really of the uh, other binders, um, but as you know, um, some of these smaller binders, I've actually had to take off all the all the uh, the, the leather inside because it starts cracking. This one is I don't use it. Uh, this is much newer than this one. Um, but the cracking has, the cracking has started, and it, in fact, I've noticed some more cracking there, which is a bit disappointing. Is there any on this side? Um, yep, a little bit more cracking there. So it's just getting worse and worse and worse, and I, I am resigned to it. 
because I love these I love these Guilford Mini Extra Slim so much because of the form factor, the size of them. Uh, but it is a problem, uh, and the the size of paper in here it's not it's not uh, conducive to planning anything. And this size, this is. Uh, effectively a narrow version of A6. It's my own custom size. Um, uh, this is not very good for planning. If you're going to plan something, you need some space, some some real estate, some paper real estate. And so I quite often, when I'm planning things uh, in an informal way, I use A4 because it is cheap paper. It's it's it well. From an environmental point of view, it's it's not cheap, but I do I do use both sides and I cut it down. So if I'm if I only use a little bit, then I cut it down to A5, and if I use a little bit of the A5, then I cut it down to personal. If I use a little bit of the personal, I cut it down, and it will go into actually not here because this is grid paper, but it will end up it will end up as A7 in one of my Guilford Mini Extra Slims, um, so that I am, in fact, I even use a eight uh, scrap bits of paper. So any paper I don't use, um, a bit, I've gone a bit wild here because I was actually writing at an angle and uh, having a coffee at the same time. But um, let me just show you, let me just, let, let me just go back to the, uh, the the quality of this leather. So this, this is a layer of, a thin layer of leather that's stuck to a man-made substrate and bearing in mind I've probably used this one tenth of the time compared to this I was using this every day for 10 years and look look at this let me hold it up to the camera a little bit um, there's no cracking at all not a single bit of cracking not even at the corners here where it tends to start going. So I am genuinely impressed with the quality of this leather. And it does actually say A4 Lindhurst Deluxe Leather. And in this particular binder, it must refer to the outside leather, which is very, very nice. Deluxe leather, hard wearing, soft, supple, nice to the touch. But it also uh, clearly refers to the inside which is similarly nice. This one says, this one says deluxe leather, but I'm assuming they just mean the outside because the inside is definitely not deluxe leather because it's starting to crack as many models do. Um, I think it's, I think it's okay as a working tool, but obviously if I was in love with this wonderful binder that I bought and I was, you know, um, some people uh, are very, very attached to their binder. I mean, I'm attached to a hundred binders, so I have to spread the love more thinly, as it were, across a whole range of binders rather than just have one or two. So I do love my binders, but it's um, I don't have a particular favourite. I mean, I do like these. I do like these, but then again, I do like that. And then I love the others in this studio. I mean, oh dear, oh dear, don't get me started. I, I Okay, I admit it. Uh, my name is Neil and I love file effects. Um, but let me show you, uh, let me show you what I'm doing with this because it's something I have been doing for a little while now. And as you can see, I'm using these uh, document wallets plastic dockets what well, I don't know what you call them uh, in where wherever you are in the world you will have a name for these and uh, you can buy these very very cheaply I think there are I think there's about a hundred in here and they cost me six pounds so you know very very cheap six pence each and one of the beauties of this I mean there are certain advantages there's a few disadvantages and some advantages. One of the one of the disadvantages is you have to take the sheet of paper out to write and then poke it back. Um, that's really the only disadvantage, as far as I can see, uh, because the 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 big advantages are 
you don't have to punch the paper. And the Lindhurst has enough width to be able to accommodate not only an A4, these are A4 sheets, not only the A4 sheet, but the extra width of the document holder, the plastic document holder. And so you can, so long as you're careful, you can't zip it up in a hurry, but as, as you can see, you can zip this together. But personally, I don't do that because this is, this is typically, um, on a shelf and I, I don't have it like this I have it like like this horizontally placed on a shelf and it works just fine no problem and what I what I uh, find with this now when I when I do this when I open the rings it's no big deal uh, there is a bit of noise there but it is um it's something that if you were in a library, you probably wouldn't want to do that. It's quieter. So what I'm banging on about is it is quieter to open, uh, just just slide out the paper and then use it uh, because you're not clickety-clackety opening the rings all the time, which could drive someone insane. Not just in a library, but say if you're doing this on a train and people are trying to get some sleep, you know, you don't want to go click, clack, click, clack. It is a very, very important point. It's one of the reasons why I like these Atoma uh, um, disc-based binders, because you can... I'm not going to do it. Well, okay, let me do it. Um, there's no, there's no way you're going to upset someone by just doing that. It's so quiet, isn't it? So that is one of the advantages. But I'm not a fan of Atoma rings for A4 size because I don't have an A4 punch, um, and also the the it's a lot of faff doing it. I actually prefer certainly with a4 sheets project sheets doing it like this and i have i have another one of these binders uh for personal stuff um which i'm working on um and it is so nice to be able to just it's just so convenient to just because business correspondence tends to be a4 certainly no larger in the uk uh to just put this into a slide it into a plastic document holder because you don't have to punch the holes and inevitably if you get some correspondence and the correspondence encroaches into this margin where you would punch the holes then you, you're going to have difficulty whereas here you preserve the whole thing and crucially if you're working with vintage paper or photographs or letters or things that you don't want to punch this is ideal uh, for instance, uh, something that I, I recently did. So this is my podcast, and I was, I was actually because I was on a train planning it. I actually used a sheet from my Atoma disc-bound binder, so I put it in here, and then, and then I, um, uh, I, I, I just um, uh, there we go. So it is, it is what it is. Um, in fact, actually, on this one, uh, I did it. The, I did it the other way round. I, I was, um, I had this in the train, and I just wrote things out, and then all the things I could think of because I like to do that with a podcast. Nothing too formal, just bullet points, bullet points, bullet points, and then I wrote it out here, and then I had to uh, put in the chapters, uh, and I, I, um, I just put it in here for the now, for for now. Um, but this this system works well, and the reason why I mean I've taken a lot of stuff out, uh, which is in my filing cabinet at the moment. But um, because I didn't want to reveal stuff that I haven't done, basically. Um, but I have getting on now for two hundred plans for videos for this particular channel and I have all my other projects for other videos all go in one 
binder, to be honest, at the moment, uh, because there's not so many in the pipeline. Um, but certainly for the Flatability channel, my Flatability channel, I have two, just over 200 videos that I think I'm up to 182 as I record this in mid-October 2023. Um, so I actually have more. This is the crucial thing. I have more uh, video projects um, in the pipeline, as it were, but certainly at uh, at the planning stage, um, than I've actually ever made videos before. So over 200 of these sheets, if you like, and uh, I've done 181 videos. So lots and lots and lots of things um, in the pipeline, as it were. But this... Um, uh, here we go. So this is actually... Uh, um, for my, my notes for this very video. So um, let's have a look at this. Um, join me and uh, let's let's run through it together. So um, ah, twenty years. So it's a twenty. It's twenty years old or thereabouts. Flattability is as always is the case with A4 binders. Is is fine um, as you get smaller and smaller because the Lindhurst goes down from the. Uh, A4 size and A5, and personal size and pocket and mini size. As you go smaller and smaller and smaller, the, uh, um, the the actual flattability becomes uh, uh, less. Uh, but certainly, there's no problem with this, as you would expect, because it is it's quite a meaty thing. So let's let's go through this. So we've talked about the condition, and there's no cracking. Um, some outer wear. Now, this is this is actually a really really good point that I missed. There is some, there is some fading and wear because this takes a hammering um, on the dashboard of a car, on tables, sort of um, all sorts of things where this you really need a binder that will stand up. And this has stood up very very well. You don't get the, the the sometimes on some binders you get splitting, particularly here, where it starts peel and then you can and then you get the unsightly cardboard. I think it's probably the stiffener, um, the structure on this. It feels there's definitely a stiffener, and it's probably oh, I don't know. I, I mean I don't know whether it's plastic or stiff cardboard, but there's nothing wrong with cardboard. I mean as you saw from a video. Um, a few a few episodes back, I actually took apart a. Uh, I mean, it's a bit. Of, I, I, it was a bit of a horror film <laughs> because it took long so long, and I had to do it twice. But um, there is a stiffener here, but um, you can't see the stiffener. It hasn't protruded yet. Be I, I just think the uh, from the from the ability to for the binder to stand up to. Heavy, and when I mean heavy, I mean seriously heavy wear. This is um, this 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 takes some beating. Um, A4 plastic wallets. I've got. Uh, I think I've got eighty in here, not a hundred. Um, and there and and low noise. As I say, you don't have to use the rings um, if you're doing this. Um, I'm not using the zip. Okay, so the capacity. So the capacity is at least a hundred of these. So I've got eighty in at the moment, and there's plenty, plenty of room for for more. Uh, the zip, which I do use, and certainly when I was using this every day on the road, um, I was undoing and doing up the zip every day, or several times a day for ten years, just over ten years. So. It's it's fine. It works really really well. Um, planning. Well, we're we we've covered the planning. Uh, right now, this is an important thing. Multiple inputs. What do I mean by multiple inputs? So, what I mean by multiple inputs is using this system, you can add to your plan if you like. If your plan is going to be based on uh, A4 paper, you can add bits of paper, A6, A7, A8 even, um, more A4. I, I think uh, you could probably, in here I've got about 10 sheets of A4 in one single docket. Now, 
you probably couldn't get away with having 10 sheets in every docket and why would you but crucially this is the important thing this is the important thing just imagine and i'm not a fan of well stuffed or overstuffed file faxes as you know i, I prefer something that's more slimline where i have more than one file fax for the purpose or or other binder so quite often i'm carrying a combination of my frankenfax and my atoma diary and my guildford mini extra slim uh normally this one which i use as a itinerary travel fax stroke inbox um but if i had all of those in one binder then i would it would be like this this is a well stuffed personal size and you can see that the paper is starting to to fit out so i'm not a fan of this i know it's nice to have everything in one place um, but i tend to like having several because then i can open all of them on my desk and i i that's the reason why i like the flattability so i don't have to physically hold them open and then just uh, work one-handed they can all work on my desk all open at once a bit like if you're using a computer you have several maybe several windows open on your desk at once uh, this is the like the analog equivalent of that having several binders open on your desk simultaneously so that you can be faster transferring information from one to another if that's what you want to do um so this is the thing um, or just going back to the whether this is overstuffed or not. Um, one of the advantages of this is, so we've got 80 sheets here, 80 plastic document holders. Um, if I have several, of, if, if there was paper in every single one of these, uh, it would the capacity of the binder would remain the same uh, because it will, you've only got 80 80 sheets going through the rings but you might have shall we say for the sake of argument 250 or 300 sheets of paper uh, even better if you're using bank paper which i quite often do which is 50 gsm really really thin paper um, so you can get a serious amount of capacity in here by virtue of the fact that you're not attaching to the rings shall we say 300 sheets of a4 you can have 300 sheets of A4 in here, but what is going through the rings is just the plastic document holders. So you could potentially have, let me try, so just imagine that this is on my desk like, let me put my tripod in here. So just imagine that this is so overstuffed, it, it has maybe 500 sheets, maybe 600 sheets of paper in here, and so much so that it won't actually close and it might look like might look like that. But if it's just working from home, uh, you could have maybe 600 sheets in here by virtue of the fact that you could um, have multiple sheets in one document. Holder. So that's what I'm banging on about and how it is so versatile from a planning point of view. Um, uh, so, yes, so lots of lots of bits of paper stuffed into each of these things. And they don't have to be A4. They could be any size. Get them all out. Spread them out. That is your project. When you're finished, put them all back in so you can be working. You can be working on a particular project and obviously you can just like any other repositionable system you can if you want to work on this one and you want to put it here then I don't know why I'm demonstrating this because you are all experts at this anyway but you could put this one here you still have even though you're putting documents into the plastic document holders you can rearrange the order um, of the document holders themselves recycling well the, what i mean by recycling is inevitably inevitably these are these are about a year old and they they look fantastic to be honest so i 
I I'm not expecting to rip the holes on he, these any any time soon. They seem to be very very robust, and I got these from W. H. Smiths. Um, they seem very very good, very very cheap. Six quid for six quid for one hundred. Um, how does that stack up with getting? I don't know whether you can get this sort of thing from uh, Filofax, but. I think Filofax makes some in the smaller sizes with a zip, but they are quite expensive. At the end of the day, these are just cheap plastic document document holders. Um, I think that's a bargain. I think that's a real bargain, especially when you consider the amount of time, physical time, it takes to um, uh, hole punch uh, sheets and also not only hole punch sheets, but find a way of attaching these, perhaps with a stapler to the main A4 sheet. This is this is a better way because you can you don't have to attach the sheets. You can take them out, put them on your desk, and you can you can spread them out so you've got an overall picture. Works well, no problem. Job done. Um, uh, so I would say if there, you know, when these come to the end of their life, as they probably will if you use them enough, because I reuse these, I reuse them and reuse them and reuse them. So it's uh, it's something that I don't throw away when I have finished a, a project. They, they can be reused, but, you know, I am imagine that this kind of plastic can be recycled. Um, I put here possible use in other binders. Well, I'm actually, I'm actually not sure. You can leave comments if you would, uh, if you would like. I know I appreciate that. Um, as to whether or not you can get these plastic sheets in, you know, fairly cheaply in A5 or indeed personal size or pocket size or maybe even mini size. I don't know. I suspect not, but. Um, let me know. Uh, but certainly these are, because they're, because A4 is a common business use for this sort of um, document holder, uh, it's not a problem for A4. Um, and I really, really, I, I could probably get away with using this system with A5, but frankly, I really do like the fact that I, I like using this cheap, printer paper uh, which comes in A4 size I don't have to cut it down to A5 anything smaller it works and as I mentioned before so this is this this is my plan my bullet points for this video what I will do uh, at, uh, later on is I will cut the page and I will use this this paper for another purpose maybe probably too personal size or it might let's let's see um yep so i could get too personal size for my custom size on my frankenfax that would probably be the best thing and then if i don't use the pages there then they will end up almost certainly as a seven uh, size bits of paper in my guildford mini extra slim as an inbox so this paper isn't wasted, and I also use the back of the paper, particularly when it gets down to the uh, the inbox size. Um, so it it just works. Um, there's one more, one further thing, and these rings have been very very good. I never had any problems with these rings. I would say they are excellent quality because I was opening and shutting these rings. Uh, I mean, this is 20 years old, and the rings are just as in perfect alignment now as they were 20 years ago. It's taken an absolute hammering. Obviously, I don't sit on it or tread on it or do anything to risk damaging the rings and making them out of alignment. But certainly the mechanism, this mechanism has stood the test of time. It's um, it's just a... I, I don't know who made the mechanism, if you know let me know but it's it is a uh, um it's one of these riveted on mechanisms um but the the mechanism works absolutely fine the only thing i don't like is on some binders this this zip is very very tight there's it's very very difficult to press the press the um sometimes it's the the zip when they manufacture them 
on binders. This zip is under so much tension with it open like this. There's not enough room to press the the uh, the lever down for the the mechanism lever to open it. But in this case, uh, it works absolutely fine. There's there's plenty of room. There's a little bit of slack there, so it's not a problem to open the rings. They were absolutely fine. Uh, it's just some other, some other binders I've come across, particularly in A5 size. I've got a Metropole somewhere, and it's almost this is so tight that it's it's almost impossible to open the 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 the, the mechanism because the ring the, the 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 zip mechanism is sitting tightly underneath the the lever and preventing them from opening. So. You have to basically fiddle about and open them with your fingers. and uh, But this one is actually very, very good. Um, the other thing, finally, is... Let me just go back to this. I have seen some binders where this material uh, that is attached to the zip uh, is, is just coming apart. It's starting to become detached, especially at the corners here. Um, but... Because this is cloth, I think it's because some of them it's like some sort of fake leather or, you know, it's trying to make it look like it's leather. Uh, and it's just splitting and, and then you can see the white, the, the white um, substrate underneath. That, now, that's an interesting thing. If you're going to have, if you're going to manufacture a binder where it will eventually start splitting here or here or here or you know you, we all know that there are binders out there that where where the substrate is starting to to uh um uh split or come off or or even here um but this is my i mean i'm uh, i'm probably going to mention this in a podcast but if you're going to have if you're going to market a product and manufacture a product where you are inevitably there's going to be wear and tear well if it was me, I would make sure that the man-made substrate is the same colour as the leather. I know there are economies of scale for just keeping it at any old, any old, uh, but but maybe make it black, um, so that when it starts cracking and it's becoming really unsightly, it doesn't look to the to to from a distance as as it's really really horrible. Um, uh, but I'm very, very pleased with this one because it is actually standing up very, very well. And, you know, 20 years of use. I think I paid £100 for this uh, back in 2003. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, it was £100 well spent. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed not only my revisiting of this binder, um but also uh, about how I'm how I'm actually using it. So thanks very much, and until my next video, goodbye.